Nigerian laws have been revealed to be a factor preventing the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, from cancelling the Kogi elections. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anako. The Independent National Electoral Commission has blamed the Nigerian law for its inability to cancel the Kogi and Bayelsa state elections, which have been said to have been rife with violence and vote buying. Now I wonder, is it true that some of the laws governing Nigeria are preventing our leaders from doing the right thing? And if this is true, can we change them? Anyway, I'm not going to be answering those questions because joining me I have two learned Gentlemen, Daniel Odupe, he's a legal practitioner. It's good to have you join us, Daniel. And of course, uh, I have Christian Wogu, also a legal practitioner. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Mr. Wogu. Uh, INEC has come out to say, because the average Nigerian is saying, INEC is corrupt. INEC has seen all of the violence that took place. Why did they declare that election? But tell us, what does the Electoral Act has to say in situations such as this? Okay, um... Let's actually review the position of INEC and see whether we will give them that privilege, um, I'll give them that escape route they are uh -huh. actually looking for. Um, let's take it that if exactly what's reported is the position of INEC, that INEC has admitted that it defaulted or the, the, the election was faulty, that is, it has actually by this assertion, um, positioned now that the, the election in Kogi and Bayelsa were not good, they were bad elections. Mm -hmm. And that would um, mean that, because to conduct elections, that's the duty of INEC. It's not just about the day of election, it's to prepare the election in such a way that it comes out clear, mm -hmm. clean. And see if he didn't do his work and he's coming back to blame the lawyers, we are going to have a challenge with that. Now, the other challenge I have is assuming another party had won, would INEC also had told us that their arms were tied and um, therefore the winner actually is declared? And INEC will have found a way out. There must be a way out. So you can't say because the law prevented it from working. I think it's just uh, red herring. So, so you're telling me, because there is a rule book for which INEC operates with, and also they do this in continence with the Electoral Act, which is under the, uh, the Constitution, one way or the other. Like they say, I know there's a word you guys use that says every other law is subject to the Constitution. Is there anything within the... Electoral Act or INEX rules and guiding regulations that gives them an out. What are the things that INEX is supposed to say in situations like this when there's violence, when there's a lot of ballot box snatching, when there's general, you know, there's nothing that you could point to as free, fair, and credible? Is there something INEC can do before the law courts or the tribunals are being pointed to? You see, that's the real challenge I have with that position because INEC is already assuming what the courts will have done. And so they, they are acting, they said they, in the other time they acted that the court did not endorse what they did. Of course, that's why the court is there. It doesn't, it can, INEC cannot just say because in the previous times they acted this one, the court didn't agree with them. Therefore, they can't sit up and do, they, they need to be conscientious. Do your work and let ultimately the judiciary do its own work. INEC cannot say because of what they think the judiciary will do in the future, Therefore, that's why they didn't sit up and give us credible elections. I can't afford to excuse them. I think it would be too much of a privilege. Okay, Daniel, because I'm, tr I'm trying to understand if there is any way, or is there a way in which there is a clash between INEX duties and where it stops and where the Electoral Act or the tribunal you know, begins its own job? Is there a clash of duties or is INEC also trying to hide behind the fact that the law is supposed to take its course at a certain level. Where does INEX duty stop and where does the court begin? I agree with my learning colleague um, to a very, very large extent. 
I think basically what Anik is doing here is just playing hide and seek. You know, um, the law is clear. Thank God the power they are hoping or they are wishing they have, they do not have it. Because I can assure you, if they have that power, they will abuse it. So the law is clear. The law is, is, is detailed enough. What exactly happened? You cannot have the power to declare and to, 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 to cancel an election. That is the duty of the court. And thank God they do not have that. Everybody's duty is clearly spelled out. However, like you rightly alluded to, depending on what actually happened, there is or there are ways of of uh, there are ways to remedy the situation. For example, for example, if there is overvoting, the returning officer has the power under the electoral act not to you know declare that particular result because if the people the result you have is more than the, the registered voters do you understand what i'm trying to say so basically there are ways there are sufficient ways of escape depending on what actually happened if there's violence the law is clear on what what, what should happen you know so you so if those things happen if if those things are, are, this, are the case you know you know supposed to do you cannot just come and make a blanket statement and say oh the elections here is true the elections I'm trying to understand because Yaga had a press conference right after that election um, on that weekend talking about how bad the election was. Um, international and local observers also complained about. My question, I guess, is what does INEC need as enough proof to say, well, we have proof from the people and observers. So here it is, tribunal. You decide what should be. What does INEC need? Because that I'm trying to so, probe. So, so basically, this is what we're trying to say. So again, INEC needs to, thank God, because by their statement, like my colleagues said, like, by their statement, they're already like, almost condemning themselves to say this election were not proper. But what they need to do is to come out and explain what exactly happened in details, in particular, local government by local government, that's what we now determine what should happen part-time. So, for example, it is not the duty of INEC to go to the court and say court declare election void. That's not, it is the duty of the participant in the election, by participant I mean the, the, those who have the political parties, to say, however, depending on what actually happened, it is not all the results that we, that you know, that will form part, you know, part of the final result that, that we collected. If there's violence in the place, if there's ballot snatching, if there's ballot snuffing, all of those things, the law has given INEC sufficient power not to accept those. Those are the things we are saying that you cannot just come out. So it looks like they're just trying to pretend to us and take the of us. Oh, we don't have the power. The, the point is, what happened in particular? What happened in details? What does the law say about those specific instances? I, like I mentioned earlier, which is overvoting. You don't explain what should happen. You cannot take an election if it is overvoting. Do you understand? So, mm -hmm. so before you arrive at the election, you can't just come and say election is bad, the election is bad. It's just like you're taking people for food. Before you got that result, what are the constituents of what made the election to be bad? Is there violence somewhere? Was there violence storming? The law is clear on what you should do for that particular instance. Those are, those are the points we are, we are making that depending on what actually happened, the law is replete with provisions on what INEC should do. And just, that's what we're saying. They have not done. Not for us. They not come and say, "Oh, we just have to, you know, accept the election as it is and all that." No, so, so Pastor Wogo, um, due diligence on the part of INEC, from what we're discussing, has not necessarily been done. And then, does it mean that, as an umpire, INEC does not have a say in whether an election was free, fair, and credible? Because they are the ones who it's like giving an exam and awarding marks. You see, that's the real point you're making, Marianne, and that's that Anik is saying here we lack the competence to even organize an election. That's exactly what I understand him as saying. Because you see, if you cannot deliver on an election, why are you there in the first place? That's, that's something they must deal with. Because if they say, look, we, because they are saying just like anybody who wants to um, divest itself of responsibility, we, our hands are tied, uh -huh. then why are you there? You know, it's the duty of INEC to ensure that security angle of an election is put. Because if the, basically these are security lapses. If the security lived up to their duties, 
Uh, why would there be uh, such violence? Why would there be such But is it killing? the job of INIC to make sure that security works? Because INIC is just an umpire. They are not the police commissioner or the IGP. Their job is to conduct elections. Good. FIFA no. and credible elections, I must add. But... Yeah, remember what the commissioner said. The commissioner said that what they could do, what they had power to do, is to postpone. And of course, if you look at the Electoral Act, it's very clear. That's um, the section 26 he quoted elaborately. Now, so if they anticipate, that's the skill, that's the reasonable, that is very reasonable of anybody who has been put charge of a house. Mm -hmm. If they look at it and find that everything that should be in place is not in place, then they postpone. So there is something that is just not right about that whole explanation. I wish they just hadn't even started. But one thing is clear, they've given the court a leeway to say that the election was just improper. Now, at some point, remember, I make declared election in a kitty state inconclusive. Mm -hmm. Well, because, and at the end of the day, the, the, the person that won ultimately lost because of that leeway mm -hmm. INEC gave. So it's, it's, look, it's looking to me like when INEC thinks it's okay, it will act. When he thinks it's not okay, they will give excuses. That's, that's a very challenging situation for Nigeria. Let's take another look at from another angle, because um, a woman was killed. She was burned alive. I see no civil society saying anything. I hear no women group saying anything. I hear nothing about it. It seems to have gone with the elections. And yes, you are lawyers. I, I see nobody advocating for that aspect, and people keep dying every time we have elections. And this woman died exercising her rights as a Nigerian. Is that not good enough a reason to take this issue to the highest of levels, to make a case out of it? Let's look at that human angle of it. Nobody's well, talking about this woman Well, I understand killed. that some arrests have been made, but let's just say it clear here that the wanton deaths being perpetrated in Nigeria are highly condemnable and unacceptable. And let's just start from there. And after condemning it, what do we do? Because those families, I mean, the presidency will condemn, you know, we hear people condemning it. But how do we get justice for these lives that are being lost? Because it looks like these people seem to be sacrificial lambs for every election that holds in every state in this country. How long are we going to do that? Now, um, my challenge here is... Yes, I mean, like you said, maybe nobody's talking the much that should be talked because um, somebody doesn't have a direct feeling. But Nigerian life is precious. Is it? Yes, it is. And it should be held as such. And my take is that when these things, and it has come to the level now, really, where Nigerians are killed like, in fact, um, some whole lives. Much and this is why I'm questioning the value that we place on Nigerian lives because we're, we're being killed off every other day. And so I ask, if the Electoral Act is, has clearly stated what needs to be done and where, uh, let me just refer you to uh, the Electoral Act, um, a certain section, I don't have the, I'm sure, I hope I'm correct, 140, subsection 1 and 2. Um, about nullification of elections by tribunal or court. Um, if the tribunal or the court, as the case may be, determined that a candidate who was returned as elected was not validly elected on any grounds, the tribunal or the court shall nullify the election. Where an election tribunal or court nullifies an election on the grounds that the person who obtained the highest vote at the election was not qualified to contest the election, the election and tribunal court shall declare the person or the second highest vote as elected but shall order a fresh election. In all of this that I'm reading, there's nothing about if human lives are lost, if people are killed, if ballot boxes are snatched. I see nothing here. So where does the common person go to get retribution? No, really, that's why we have the police and other enforcement agents. That's, you know, I've consistently held, even on your media, that medium that, you know, certain persons need to just resign and just accept that they are not fit for particular jobs. If we have just one or two persons who are conscientious enough to just resign and let the next best person take, you find that a whole lot of things will stop. 
But you know, um, because people, just the death of that woman is enough for the IG to resign or the SSS boss to resign. Because it just shows that, look, the, the, the work I am asked to do, somehow it's been undermined. And one way to express that your hands are clean is to make it obvious. You know, but with, I, for some reason, people just stay put when they find that they are not working. They are not yielding necessary results. Um, I, we can only do mo so much. We are talking about this here, and I guess that's the much we can do for now. And so we are saying it as bold and as audacious as we can that certain things are not working and that people just can't be dying because we want to get somebody in power for a transient period of four years. No, it's not right. But again, if we're not tired and we're not complaining and we, you know, the election cycle comes and goes and people die and then, you know, it's swept under the carpet. We shout about it on social media for a few weeks and then we go back to where do we see ourselves in the next election cycle? Because 2023 is just around the corner. How many people, I mean, the elections we had in March, we could see that the, the level of voter apathy as to who came out to register and the number of people who came out to actually vote. If this continues happening, what do we expect in 2023? Will we see anybody at the polls at all? Absolutely, I agree that um, the death of Nigerians and voters generally um, during the election period has a way of affecting you know, their enthusiasm in political participation. I agree absolutely. And, and that's what we were getting to. The other day, I think, um, I think uh, Cardinal, um, maybe a Catholic Cardinal or something like that was saying that, and I agree that Nigerians are actually giving up on the country. And, that, and that's what we were getting to. Indeed, if the security agencies do not do their jobs, if they continue to be partisan, Nigerians will get tired, Nigerians you know, will experience voters' apathy, and we just hope that that won't happen. But basically, that is, that is one of the consequences that we should expect. I mean, if you keep, if you cannot protect people, if you're partisan, because, I mean, if you... If, 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 if but even can, the police can officers, can they protect themselves at the polling units, the average p police corporal or whoever is there has a baton, which is what the Electoral Act allows. But when these things happen, the ballot box snatches come or the violent people show up, everybody runs for cover. So can the police really protect itself? Talk less of protecting us. Mm, that, Let's be yeah, realistic. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, that question is a question that is bigger than the election itself. It's a question about, you know, about our system, about the security agencies themselves, about how equipped they are and what they view, you know. Um, yes, so, I mean, that's a starting point. Are they well equipped? Do they, do they have the latest equipment, you know, in that circumstance to take care of, you know, do they have enough information? Do they have enough manpower? These are, these are critical questions. These are questions that will affect our preparation for the next election. These are questions that will affect our preparation for this election, you know. And especially at that time when you are probably going to be stretched because we're, doing, we're conducting election in different parts of the country, you know, at the same time, that has always been a problem for us as a people. So, so we need. Kogi and Bayelsa were very isolated elections. We're, and I remember the headline where the police IG said 33,000 or if not 50 something thousand police officers were being deployed. And yet we saw the mayhem that was unleashed on the people of Kogi State. Um, the candidates for both the senatorial and the governorship elections had complaints, you know, on every side, except for those who won. So it makes me really wonder if we are really in a democracy and we want this democracy to work, because it's inexplicable if we keep having these things repeat itself, and not just on a low level, but on a higher level. No, Miriam, you would, I, I, I appreciate the, the points you're raising, and they really make one sometimes want to cry for Nigeria. Now, I'm asking myself, was it reasonably conceivable that we are going to have an election and there will not be violence? Wouldn't we, if we had an election and there, were no, there, there weren't violence, wouldn't violence wouldn't we ask ourselves what happened? But, it, but, but the elections in Bielsa were reasonably peaceful compared to the Bielsa that we always know. Oh, well, um, it's a matter of who is looking at it. Somebody else 
is having contrary views. But again, you're talking about reasonably peaceful. That means it wasn't absolutely peaceful. peaceful Why course. can't we even have an election and have it absolutely peaceful? Now, because the people who should enforce are interested in perpetrating the violence. Basically that, you know, it's a question of if I have to get into power via violence, so be it. That's my, that's my appreciation of that fact. How did we get to a point where it's violence or no deal? How, how did we get to this point as a country where our elections have been totally marred by violence? Yeah, and because so whether, there was, whether the violence was meager or it was massive, we still had credible elections. I, it, I mean, how did we get there? Yeah, because the winner in Nigerian elections takes it all, everything. He has just everything. So people want to win. Somebody must win. You know, whether some, you know, at some point the word the do or die had been associated with Nigerian elections. And coming out from the high level authorities, saying that this election is a do or die. And different level of such statements that are provocative and very insightful. You no, know, these are the issues we are grappling with. Coupled with hunger, and coupled with the, look, okay, why, for me, I'm asking myself, why can't one party produce the president, another party produce, now then produces the vice president, another oh, party then you're produces, for too much, then. Yeah, you see, but if it's what will work, if it's what that will di dilute concentration of power, and make people know that, look, it's not all that, look, as, as far as I'm concerned, and I keep saying this, anybody that kills will ultimately die. And he's going to actually meet the person that he killed, but because the person had gotten there earlier and waiting. So we must understand that this whole thing is transient. You know, at the end of the day, like, just recently, we were watching uh, Muhammad Ali saying that all of those laurels he got now means absolutely nothing to him. But then uh, it was, was Mike like, Tyson. Actually. It was Mike Tyson. Okay, thanks very much. And then you look at it and find that at that point it was like everything. It was just everything. But now values have changed. I think that we should begin to culture values and make people see that. You know, most of these things are transient. Now, um, where do we begin to culture these values? Where, where at what point? Because it's like we've lost them. We need to start looking for them. We need to start from, so you know we have started, just the program like this is a major starter. Somebody, I, I mean, somebody is listening, somebody is also seeing that, somebody who believes in what we are saying is saying, oh, look, I'm not alone on this. And to, to a great extent, that begins a process. But I also think that the laws of Nigeria, the constitution, all of these electoral systems need to be reviewed. And there's a point you made which we nearly uh, lost that trail, and that is the role of the judiciary and the tribunal in actually getting the results that I make missed out on getting. And the judiciary did so well on that until again recently. We are seeing that um, judiciary may ultimately not be the last hope of the common man, because just as the common man is losing um, faith, in the electionary system, it's losing faith also in judiciary. So we need to cultivate a Nigeria. We may just have to start afresh and build upwards. But will the people in power agree? Now the thing that is in the system is top term. It's all back. So we need to check these things because, you know, at the end of the day, we'll just find out that we don't have anything to be quit. Well, that's unfortunate, but these gentlemen are not going anywhere. We'll take a short break, and when we return, we'll be talking about the fate of 8,000 ghost workers in Sakoto. Well, those people uh, we're going to be talking about. Stay with us. We'll be right back.